so in addition to the C style body, I'm also going to show you how to build an F style body. And the point of this one is that you can create it without any routing, without any angle grinding or carving. So it's much more straightforward to produce if you're not um, super confident in your woodworking skills. <laughs> not that I have any, so I mean, I think the C body is still pretty easy to make, but you do need, um, you know, like a hundred extra dollars in tools. So this is the, uh, the simpler alternative. So it is a flat body, there's no carving, um, though in the bow scoops we may round it a lot harder uh, than the other areas when we sand. Um, but anyways, yeah, F-style body. I'm gonna do a natural finish on this one. So we're we are gonna respect the, the grain of the uh, plywood veneer for that reason. Uh, so let me show you what I'm doing here. So a note, this is how much I had to widen the fingerboard template by. And it was because I had measured the uh, width of the end of the original fingerboard, which terminated around here. And I had neglected to account for the taper continuing out. So done that now with the new template. We're gonna use this new one on our F-style F build. The second time around, I found that uh, having the pipe kind of sitting in the groove, the sandbag kind of keeps it from rolling left to right. This uh, has been helpful holding it in place while cutting it. Just uh, something to try or something, if you can adapt something similar. Hey, just another tip that presented itself just now. Um, I find the best way to hold fingerboard is against the stomach. One tip touching the table, one tip against my stomach. For rolling the edges and having control over it, this seems to work best. Kind of hold it with your hand against your body and then you can roll freely. On this 3x3 three three headstock, I tried to do the uh, the angled cut that I had on the other on the on the six in line headstock, but as you can see, it's it's too stubby. It just does not look right. Um, so it's not going to fly. I think I'm going to do this this rounded paddly kind of thing, um, symmetrical. Obviously, three by threes lend themselves to symmetrical designs naturally because of the tuner arrangement, but um, I tried drawing a few different things on there and because I'm going to be doing a black uh, black repaint of the headstock, so it didn't really matter. But just showing you, you know, you have to adapt to whatever the, uh, the shape of the toy guitar headstock you get is. Um, always just draw it out first, look at it. Um, you know, and the biggest thing is obviously you only have between this hole and that hole. You know, that's all the material you can use because um, you got to chop off the other holes. Okay, so we got our top and our back. Um, so like I said, I, I'm respecting the wood grain this time around uh, just because um, I'm going to do a, a natural finish, which will be a, a stain <clears throat> with a clear lacquer over top. Um, and I'll, I'll probably have some black areas as accents. Um, that's something I like to do is a little two-tone kind of effect. So I already have the, uh, the neck uh, mostly ready for this one. Just need to put in the frets uh, on the fretboard and then that'll be ready to go. So, um, but we need to build the body and that is the, uh, that's the part that I'm filming here. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just, I just want to go with the grain of the wood, try to avoid any knots. 
um, you know, you're basically you're picking the the texture and the pattern that you're going to get. Uh, so, you know, there are some interesting features. Um, now obviously, there's this huge knot here. I'm going to avoid that. You can, you can, I mean, you can do it if you want, but um, I think knots have issues with filling and staining as well as with cutting. It looks like they. I'm not sure what that is. So, um, I do like this pattern down here. I'm not entirely certain how to get that without. I, mean, I got this dark area here, which I don't remember if that was a sticker or what that was. So, I mean, I I think I'm going to stick to the more more generic areas. Boring. But, um, be like that. So there's some wibbly wobbliness here, which would be nice on the uh, main circular section of the body. <coughs> so, yeah, I'm just going to commit. Um, so I'll draw the outlines, and then I will cut out the... Uh, parts that we need to cut out and come back and do those. Um, so once again, note, there's no uh, tighter bevel on the top than the back. They are the, the same width, same waist size. Um, like I said, we may just bevel these bow scoops just by sanding uh, those a little harder just to get a little bit of extra uh, clearance there for the bow. Um, but yeah, so let me mark the outlines and then we'll come back and do the inside parts. As you can see, I'm not taping this down. I'm sort of just working my way around, holding it down with my fingers um, so that it doesn't move. <clears throat> Once I have the outline, and that, you know, is all the guide you need to come back and line it up for the other <coughs> inside sections. So that's all good. Um, just writing back on there. Upside down. Are you impressed? <laughs> really should not have done that. I forgot this was a stain finish. Oh god. Okay, well... <laughs> I was thinking it was going to be black. Well, maybe that section's going to be black. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see. I may have just uh, made a decision there for myself on accident. What I'll probably do is paint the sides black. So maybe what I'll do is have black back end sides and a, uh, a dark dark stained top <clears throat> that could be cool it's not right top on this one <laughs> <laughs> right it outside. Ah, oh, Jesse. Okay. Um, all right. So what do we what do we need? Um, <clears throat> so the top needs a neck pocket, and back needs the output jack and the cavity cover. So now that we actually have. Um, base cavity cover here. You can see it's just a, just a little bit off. It's very close. Um, so there we go, yeah. It's basically just a little, just a little longer. This is the access door, which means I have to cut the outer dotted line <clears throat> so 
that means I can just cut the inner one for the pine wings later out of the top. So that's cool. Because I have redundancy with having the top and back both marked for all this stuff. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the cavity cover out of the back. So we can do that on the plywood. I might make it optional to recess the output jack also because it is just kind of sitting hanging out there and the uh, access door is not <clears throat> so let's um <clears throat> let's see real quick what that would look like so basically if I cut out this shape out of the back plywood and then cut out the normal jack size out of the oak core then I can recess this jack plate um, so that it doesn't poke out on the back and that might be a little better ergonomically so let's do that Now, redraw this shape. Bigger, better, faster, stronger. Um, you know, actually, <clears throat> with this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scoot it up to here so that it, so that its bottom edge agrees more with the uh, cavity cover. Cause that's what the, uh, that's how it was aligned before with the other hole. So, yeah, there we go. That should make more sense. Yep. Now, uh, we have to get the top, get a real neck pocket shape on there, as we did with the C-Style body. Go get my neck. This one is a uh, two by two paddle style. So, so this neck looks like it's a bit wider than the other one was. Here, I'm actually gonna use this ultra fine point Sharpie because I don't have a lot of wiggle room on this one. <clears throat> All right, and now, Draw this one with the ultra fine port sharpie also because I had issues with the lines bleeding before and when you have this little wiggle room I don't want to uh, don't want to deal with that on this one. We are removing this just note to myself. <coughs> All right, so we gotta cut these out now. Um, once again, I'm doing the larger output jack hole because I want to recess it. And, yep, so we gotta drill holes to start the uh, skill saw. Safety glasses on.
shot. Now, what do we need to do next? Check the fit of the neck. That's right. Not even close. What did we change first? <laughs> Thought I forgot, didn't you? Okay, better. This pointy outy thing still not flying. I keep thinking that's going to work from the bottom of the neck, but it doesn't work on the top. There we go. That's a good fit. Alright, so these pine wings for the <coughs> F-style body are basically just edges. Um, because we have to cut out these big sections. This is the control cavity side, and this is the other side. They both have to go. Before I cut the outline, there's one more thing I gotta do. Is I need to take the top side, which is this side, where these uh, islands are for the screws for the cavity cover. I need to chop off, chop them off at an angle so that they uh, won't hit the top. Makes it so that it doesn't get in the way of the top, but on the bottom side where the screws go, it's still there. Alright, time to cut these outlines. Now what? Ah! I'm going to give myself extra like I did last time. Yes, I am. But I'm going to try to, once the body's glued together, make a pass where I cut it closer to trim so that I don't have to sand so freaking much. Okay. Bottom tying wing, cut out. Okay, so we got the top, we got the back. Got the top wing, the bottom wing. So now, find the oak, cut the core pieces. Got drill a hole, the output jack. Turn it on, it's on the ground somewhere. Fits. That's good. <clears throat> so now I'm going to cut the tail off. So now the only thing left is the neck riser. So let's consult our template. Go to our brand new piece of board that's four feet long. I need like four inches of it. Uh, well, so. And the riser, we have where that is on the plans. So I'm gonna overlay the back here and mark that so that I know where the neck riser should stop. So it should stop there. Okay. 
Yes, that is on the inside. Phew! I was marking on the wrong side again. Natural finish instruments are scary. Can't cover up your mistakes. So we got that. I can. Oops. I need the sidelines too. Right. Right there. Alright, so, I think we know what we got now. Hmm. Mac riser. So what do we need to do now? Test fit, right. Okay, this, this is more what I expected. Okay, it's close. We have a bit of a, a lean issue from the jigsaw here. I think take that lean out, it should be fine. Try again. pieces. Done with the safety glasses. Done with the jigsaw. Done with the Nicky for now. Time to glue things together. Danger, danger, warning, awooga, awooga. So I assumed that both of these boards I bought from the same section in Lowe's would be the same width, but they are not. This one. Note the overhang. Uh, so, you, you cut all your pieces out of one of these, um, and then you will have consistent width. Uh, I don't know why it's inconsistent. I guess I've never done this off more than one board before. So, just note, I'm gonna have to cut this down now, because it's not gonna mate well with the pine wings otherwise. So, you've been warned. All right, so this I decided to glue up one half of the pine wings at a time because my clamps weren't wide enough to do the whole thing at once. Boom. 
Boom. Boom. Boom. There we go. Now, gluing on the second wing. Boop. Well, we got a problem. Remember how I raised the input jack position on the back plate? Because of the recessing it thing? Well, I forgot about that when I cut it out of the oak core. So, we can recut the top of that, but there's now no material for that bottom screw to go on. Hmm, what do we do? Okay, well, I uh, found a wee tiny piece of scrap there, and uh, it's about the right shape to go in that hole, so I'm going to cut off just what I need and glue it into the uh, glue into the end of that hole there and uh, hopefully that will give us a ledge I hope all right so I found it now, let's see what we're dealing with. So I'm gonna put that in there. Give that second screw a shelf to rest on. It's perfect, no, no it is not, not even close. But, I think I'll do the job. You know the drill. Glue, clamp. All right, and there we go. Got it clamped in. Hopefully that'll do the trick. All right. Well, it's a it's a bit iffy, but I think it should be okay. All right. So now. Spray painting the sides in the back black, so it does not matter. I'm drawing purple all over this right now. Just making sure that I'm gonna get that line back up correctly. And let's see, this popped off over here from all the vibration. So I'll put some more glue in there before I screw the back on down. Here's a little tip, you need to put marks on a black surface, silver sharpie, it's the way to go, 100%. Alrighty, this is dried overnight. Alright, now I'll put jack recesses in there, the way it's supposed to, looks like that little wood block will Take the screw just fine. So, what we got left, kids? That's right, glue the top on. I want to make sure that it lines up with the neck pocket. That's my primary concern. And then the rest of the body from there. What do we have to do? That's right, test fit the neck. 
Test fit the neck. Always test fit the neck. Beautiful. All right, so that's good to go. There's one thing I want to mention. Um, on either model, this area here, this, uh, this upper bout for the front of the instrument, you can cut that out and buy, instead of the $23 pickup system that I'm using here, you can buy JJB Electronics $40 pickup system that has a volume and tone control and you can mount those here um, on the top in this section um, after cutting this out and then run the wires up through there. So um, the only difference process wise is you would either want to install them before you glue this on or you need to make a second access door here on the back. Um, I've never had any issues with JJB Electronics stuff. It always just works. So I would, I would just screw, drill the two holes for it, cut this out before you glue this this pine wing on. Um, install the volume tone, snake it, snake the cables down here, then glue this on, and then proceed as usual. And then you'll have a volume and tone control. Um, otherwise, it's the exact same pickup system. I don't use volume and tone controls. Um, it's never been useful to me, so I, I'm not putting them in these instruments. But uh, if, uh, if you want that, then it's a real, real super easy mod. And like I said, like $17 extra. And it's a great pickup system. I've, I've, had, I've put it in a couple of cello tars, but uh, I just didn't use the volume and tone enough to justify it. So moving on, let's glue this puppy on. Just lining up the neck pocket by feeling, feeling the inside edges of it and making sure that the plywood and that line up. Um, which I'm just gonna have to redo that in a second after I put the glue on. So uh, I don't know why I'm doing that right now. Oh well, okay. Top should be glued on. <clears throat> that means that we can cut down the pine wings with the jigsaw next. Ooh, some big glue blobs there. go. It's our F style body. Ready to have all that extra pine on the edges hacked off. Let's just check our fit on everything. Yep, recessed. Oh, back is a go. Cover plate Cavity is good. Glue squeezing out back there too. All right, so let's get these edges trimmed. I'm literally just using the, uh, the outside edge of the plywood as the guide and hacking off anything extra from the pine. When I'm done, I'm gonna flip this over because. 
you know, the positioning of the plywood plates doesn't necessarily agree from side to side. So I'm actually going to do this pass on both sides. Cut the pine off flush to the uh, top and back plates. I definitely recommend doing it that way. That was way better than the intense sanding that I had to do on the uh, on the C style body. So yeah, highly recommended. Trim the pine wings with the jigsaw before you uh, before you go to sand, <sighs> which is what we we're gonna do next. So before we can sand this. We have some spots like here, there's gaps and height inconsistencies. Um, around the back. So, we need to wood fill those jokers first before we can move along. So, let that wood filler dry thoroughly, and we can sand this puppy down. Well, we all know what it's time for. More sanding! Yay! Everyone's favorite thing. <sighs> this is literally the main thing I'm looking forward to not doing anymore. <clears throat> when I stop building stuff and move out of the country. It's just not being not having to sand stuff anymore. That's that's my main thing. <laughs> Got our final patches, the uh, detail patches for the spots we needed to refine. So I got this sanding sponge. And it's got 120 on one side and 180 on the other. I'm gonna go ahead and use that for my final pass here so I can be more accurate less likely to shake loose big chunks of the wood filler than if I was using the, uh, using the electric palm sander. Sides are reasonably smooth. It's always harder to get those to be real smooth. The plywood top and back are very, very smooth. Sounds good. Sounds very tonal. Excellent. Let's 
going to be good for this the uh, sound of the instrument once it's together. I just want it to have a nice tonal knocking sound. It's called tap tone. Okay, so this is uh, this is fully sanded. So I need to get a damp towel, get all the dust off of it, and then we can move on to staining and paint. All right, so last time I wiped it down with a damp paper towel, it was, uh, it was too wet, and it was not good. I had to wait for the body to dry. This time this one is far less damp. It doesn't need to be that wet. We're just trying to get excess like dust residue from the sanding process off so it doesn't get trapped underneath the stain or lacquer. So that's that's all we need to do there. It's not, uh, not as extensive as I tried to make it last time. Okay, so I need stain. Well, to be completely honest, I couldn't find the stain I wanted to use, but I found this one. And uh, so we're gonna use this one. So one I typically have liked using on my stained cello tars is like a really dark color. Um, this one claims to be lighter, like a, it's a special walnut, but uh, I don't know, it was pretty dark when I put it on before and the thing with stain is the more coats you do, and the longer you let it sit before wiping it off, the darker it gets. So, I'm just going to do the top once again, because I am doing the sides and back in solid black. A decision that was made for me by the fact that I wrote the word back on the back in purple sharpie before I remembered that I wanted to do a stain. Always be thinking kids, always be thinking. Don't be like me. All right, read the instructions for a second. Allow the stain to penetrate five to 15 minutes. Achieve a dark color. Remove blah blah, and then there's stain covering <laughs> the rest of the instructions. Okay, well, so I'll leave this for a few and then come back to it. Put on a second coat. <clears throat> okay, it seems like that first coat is pretty much dry on there, so take two. This looks darker on camera than it really is. See the, when the highlights hit it there, that's more what it really looks like. Um, I'm gonna try one more pass, one more coat. I'm not going to <laughs> close the stain up quite yet because I want to give it another 15 minutes and see what happens. So as you can see, this neck for the second instrument that I'm building, totally different headstock shape. Um, and I didn't do the wood filler on the sides so you can still see the original frets kinda but you know the upside is you don't have all that extra filling work and stuff so you know, it's up to you however you wanna do that um, you know, your call just wanted to show you there is another way. Alright, so the directions say you need to wipe this stuff off. Um, I'm just gonna, and it is definitely still, it comes off on my finger. So I'm gonna try to uh, just kind of rub it down and see. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's definitely coming off. I'm not sure on the uh, previous stain finished cello tars I've done that I ever wiped it off. Um, so I was trying to get it you know, as dark looking as possible. 
No, I think that um, you're due to how much lighter this is than I had in mind. I think I'm definitely going to try to do the burst rim. Um, I'm just trying to figure out what the best order operations would be because there's three components when you do a burst um, with a natural wood grain as part of it versus a stain, which clearly we've done here. Um, the second is the burst, and the third is a clear coat. Trying to figure out, should I clear coat this first? Or should I do the burst first? Um, my gut says to clear coat first, because that way the uh, stain is protected, I guess. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to clear coat this. Then I'm going to do the burst. I'm just going to do it freehand. And the way you freehand a burst is you just spray kind of around the outside edge. Now this area up here is lighter than I'd like, so I'll probably make that more of a solid black and kind of keep the burst to the uh, the guitar pick shape. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna freehand it. And what I'll do is I'll hang it up um, the way that I did with the purple body. I'll hang it up so that I can spray the back and sides the solid black while I'm doing the burst. Um, for the clear coat, I'm gonna have it flat on its back so that like I mentioned, so we can get nice solid coverage with that clear coat and so that it'll end up nice and shiny. So I like it shiny. Let's do that. This is it. Rust-Oleum lacquer clear from Walmart. Four dollars a can. And uh, I've Use both Rust-Oleum and Valspar. And Valspar is horrible. Never, ever use Valspar. Rust-Oleum is the way to go. WPG. Shake it up nice and good. Yeah. Alright, here we go. hard to see what exactly you're putting on here because it's clear. So I'm just going to kind of do that, which is not a whole lot, but I'm going to do this in successive coats so that I don't get any crap dripping down the sides. So coat one, done. Come back 15 minutes. Coat number two. Yes, I should have the next pocket taped off. Kind of forgot about it because I'm spraying clear. My bad. Let me fix that. Another coat? Yes, another. More shiny. More shiny. Oh, and by the way, of course, I, uh, I found the darker stains I was looking for. After I started clear coating the thing, which is too late. Yay. Oh well.
go down a little thicker. I really want to start popping. <clears throat> I'm about to go eat lunch, so give it a longer stretch to dry. Alright, we're getting there. Developing nicely. Yes, yes, yes. Lagging it, lagging it. Good. Looking pretty shiny. Get it with the uh, other round and uh, see how uh, it's after this. body so that I can suspend it for painting. <clears throat> Pretty happy with the top. It's nice and shiny. So we're going to move on to doing sides <coughs> in the back. In black. And I'm just using this piece of wood here at the top to uh, spread out. hangs from so that the uh, zip tie doesn't <coughs> create any finish issues on the back and so that there's a gap for me to spray <coughs> the paint in between the zip tie and the back. So let's get to it. Now normally you would want to tape off Two things though, you'd have to wait till it's completely dry to do that. <clears throat> and because I'm actually going to make this burst, it doesn't really matter. It's going to be black around the edges anyway. So, yeah. <clears throat> Reasons why that excellent advice does not apply to me right now. <clears throat> yep, that's black. Start on the back because it's going to be solid back here. And once again, ah! big bug flew by my ear. I should have primed this first, but because I'm leaving the top natural, <clears throat> completely forgot. So even though I was on the painting, only painting the sides and the uh, back solid color, I still should have primed it and did not. 
So what that means is that the lacquer is going to struggle more <coughs> to adhere to the wood. <coughs> and have more trouble getting rid of the visible wood grain. Is that great? Is it perfect? <sighs> no, but uh, it is what it is. Time to move on. Alright, well, I'm almost out of black lacquer. I think I'm going to have a second can someplace, so that won't be making the decision for the next stop for me. But uh, it's definitely getting shinier, so that's good. Gonna be. So I've dealt with this a few different times. Um, the black on the front where I did the soft spraying, um, not here at the top where it's solid, but where it's speckly to create the gradient effect, um, it's chalky. It rubs off. I'm not sure why that keeps happening. Uh, someone who understands this stuff better tell me in the comments, please. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to some clear coat. <clears throat> I'm going to hit it real gently because I believe from past experience what tends to happen is it sort of melts the powdery lacquer and uh, the kind of thing. it might be safer to do this with a bunch of products. The back is still pretty fresh lacquer job. Um, I don't want it coming off on the uh, I don't want it coming off on the box. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna hit it real lightly with it hanging up and see what it does. that melts our burst and destroys it. Well, the burst is still there. Uh, another layer of clear. Clear. 
trying to get some, a little more shine happening. I'm actually going to take it down and shine up the top with it laying flat. And once again, the point of laying it flat is that you get gravity naturally pulling the lacquer. You end up with a much thicker, shinier uh, coat of whatever you spray this way. clear so I'll start determining my choices there you know with every finish there's a point at which you just have to call it and uh, look at this this morning I thought you know okay good enough so that's it we're gonna let both of these uh, just dry and cure and hang out for, uh, for a few days and then we're gonna put them together Here's a little tip for you. If your, uh, if your last three position markers, the ones hanging off the end of the neck are loose, just get some hot glue, flip it over like so. Hot glue around it so that it won't fall out. You're welcome. What can I say except? Another neck tip, if you got an area kind of bowing up with a hump and the screw you put in there just ain't cutting it, it's okay, it ain't illegal to, I'm gonna put in a couple extra screw holes on either side of that thing to really push that section down with some extra force and hopefully flatten it out. And I'm just gonna cover them up so that they don't distract. So don't, uh, don't uh, worry about modifying, correcting, adding stuff you need to do to make it work. See? A couple extra screws. Ain't no big thing. We'll cover them up. All right, got my couple extra screws in there. Recessed so I can put wood filler over them and never see them again after I repaint that section. Whoop whoop. All right, so now that these screw holes are wood filled, tape off the surrounding area and tape over the screw that I don't want to paint black now we spray this all right so here's the temperamental fret the temperamental fret fix the second fret here is sitting too high so that when you try to play the first fret you just hear the second so I'll put some glue underneath it just press and hold it down for 30 seconds and I'll take care of that 